Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is a 2001 Kia Sportage and it's making a really loud noise as we're going down the road. Uh, it's a noise that gets louder the faster you go. Um, it's kind of a scraping noise and I would describe it as similar to the noise uh, that your brake pads make when they just kind of, they're, when they're lightly touching your rotors. You know, if you just kind of jack your car up and spin the wheel, you just kind of hear a, a light scraping sound. It's like that, only much, much louder. And uh, at first I thought it was kind of, it was some brake noise coming from probably the, I thought it was the passenger front wheel. Uh, so what I did was I jacked up the car on all fours and um, this is a rear wheel drive car. So um, I would, I turned the engine on and put it in drive just to get the, the rear wheels turning. And I still heard the noise, which means that it's not the front wheels because since it's rear wheel drive, front wheels just wouldn't move when you've got it up, when you got it jacked up in the air. So it's not coming from the wheels. It's coming from the drivetrain, either the transmission or the drivetrain. So uh, let's go ahead and investigate further and see if we can find out what this noise is. All right. So we got it on. I'm gonna put it in drive. Just let it turn. You can already hear it. So here, down underneath the car. That's where the noise is coming from. So that is the center carrier support bearing, and it's actually pressed onto the end of the drive shaft there. This here, right here, this is the, um, it's sort of like an extension shaft because right here is where the, uh, the transfer case would go for the four wheel drive version. So this is just sort of a, an extension drive shaft that comes out from the, tra from the transmission. And this is the actual drive shaft itself, which runs down to the, uh, the differential back here. So, this actually right here, it's actually bolts, they're bolts together. They're bolted together with, uh, with four, four bolts. So that should be pretty easy to separate. And the uh, center carrier bearing bracket or, or bushing or whatever you want to call it is just mounted to the frame right here. There's two bolts, so that would come out. And then I'd be able to take the uh, drive shaft extension out Hopefully it just, I believe it just slips out of the, uh, the transmission right there. Should just slip right out. So I'll be able to do that and get it off and see about how we're gonna go about pulling that bearing off of the drive shaft. That's the thing I kinda don't know. I've actually never done one of these and um, I gotta figure out how exactly I'm gonna pull that off, what the best strategy is. I can't be sure, but it looks to me like the drive shaft might separate from the yoke right here at this point. So just in case that's true, I'm going to put alignment marks on them because drive shafts are balanced and I really don't want to throw off the balance. I'm also going to do the same thing right here, just on these two ends. That way I just match this yoke to that yoke. Not exactly sure if that would throw off balance or not. I'm, my guess is no, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So there's a 14 millimeter nut and bolt, four of them. Let's see if I got enough room here. Yeah, I think I do. Crack them free. Okay, and I've shifted it into neutral so that I could turn it freely. Oh, this one's harder. Okay, what we need is penetrating fluid and something bigger.
Looks like our drive shaft just came off real easily, which is great. I was afraid I would have to kind of pull it back and even disconnect it from the, from the back there, but looks like that's not going to be a problem. So I can just sort of put it off to the side. Now I'll just get these two bolts off and hopefully just pull that right out. Let's see how easy that is. Can we get on there? No, of course not. Why would that be easy, right? Oh, good. That was not so bad. And I think my gear wrench will come in handy here. Why does it look like this bolt is going to hit the top of the body before it comes out? I mean, that would just be my luck, right? Ooh, cool. That wasn't so hard. There's kind of a rubber, rubber cap to it. Pull those off. Okay. Great. Now, this should just slide right out. And it does. Along with a little bit of the transmission oil. So, as you can see, as you can hear, that's definitely the problem. Definitely the problem. So, you gotta get this nut off. It is a 26, but I don't have a 26 millimeter socket. I've got a 27. Um, it, it kind of fits on there. There's a little bit of play, but it feels solid enough to get it off. So I'm going to try and hope that that doesn't bite me in the ass. And that thing is just turning. Wow. My vice is just not strong enough. <laughs> Okay, good. Well, that makes me feel a whole lot better. I would probably need a puller to get that off. And what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is um, if I get this pulled off, if the rest of this will just slide off. I'm trying to figure out if the, because I, I, I don't know if the bearing is pressed onto the drive shaft um, or if the bearing is pressed inside the housing, this housing. Or both. I can't. Um, there's. I can't find any information on that. So, um, yeah. I think what I'll have to do is get a puller, pull this off, and then see what else I can see from there. Because the 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 reason I'm the reason I want to find this out is um, is because I don't know exactly which replacement parts to buy yet. You can buy the entire housing and the two dust seals on either side and the bearing for one hundred and forty dollars or you can just buy the bearing for $50. The fact that I see just the bearing for sale uh, makes me wonder like, oh, is there a way that you, you, know, you can get away with that? Can you just reuse these things? Cause you know, the rubber is fine. I mean, it's fine enough. Don't really care. Um, the dust seals are fine if they can come off without being damaged. The bearing is what's wrong. So if I can get the bearing out, I will try. If I can't, then I'll then, you know, I'm just gonna buy everything new but then again i still need to get a puller to get all this off <laughs> which i don't have so i gotta go get that all right i've got my brand new two jaw pullers on there hopefully having it hooked around these ears here isn't going to be a problem i think we should put a little oil on that I've got my air to oil handy Cool. Yeah, perfect. Came off real easy. Okay. So now I can, oh, look at that. Oh, that's great. So that just popped right off. It was excellent. Now let's, uh, let's examine this further. You know what, after, after doing that just now, I'm kind of wondering if I even really 
needed a puller at all. I, I just, I kind of wonder if I had just pulled, <laughs> that thing wouldn't have just come right off. I didn't even try. Uh, so go figure. Oh well. <laughs> I, I don't really care about the bearing in here. Obviously it's bad. I want to possibly reuse the housing and the two dust seals. Here's one right here. And there's another one on the inside perimeter of here. And if you want to buy the new housing with two of the dust seals and the bearing, it's $140. But if you just buy the bearing, it's $50. So I'm just, I'm just sort of curious to see if I can get the bearing out of there, the old bearing out of there. Um, what I guess I'm planning on doing is hitting it. Uh, but then I'm gonna, then again, I'm gonna be hitting on the inner race and that's probably going to just break it and leave the inner bearing in there. But, you know, why not? Let's just give it a try. Maybe like a 24. Let's just see if that does anything. I'm hoping to knock the outer oil, the oil seal out. I might be doing that, but now, now it's actually coming level with the edge of this. So I need to support this on the edges but have it open in the middle. I know I don't have anything that big, so I'll have to use my vise here if I can. I need a real vise. That might be on my Christmas list. Yeah, we're coming out. Eventually, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, look at that. So I think at this point, okay, at this point we're good. And look at that, the bearing came out. How happy am I? I'm freaking thrilled, I gotta tell you. Really happy about that. Now, this is a $50 fix instead of a $140 fix. Or possibly cheaper if I can just find this bearing itself. So it's got a number on it. It's a, it's a 62, dang, I can't even read that. 62 slash 20, 28? 62 slash 28 N. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for this bearing. Looks like it's an open bearing, which is weird. I'll, I'll try to find one that's sealed if I can, because why not? Even though there are two seals, I mean, might as well. I, they, probably just, they probably just did a bearing without seals just, you know, for cost. Because why wouldn't you get a sealed bearing? I suppose these are the, the seals themselves, but the seal does look good. So yeah, it just fits over that. But look at the gap in there. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You've got, you've got all your grease in there, but there's, there's just a gap between the seal surface and the actual, the, the ball bearings right there. It's just, that's just a gap where stuff can get in, where the elements can get in sort of. So I don't know. I'll, I'll, if I can find a different bearing that's, you know, if I can find the same bearing that just comes in the sealed version, uh, I might do that. So I have here a new national bearing, part number BCA RW122. Found this at O'Reilly for 20 bucks. Um, I think it was 25 at AutoZone. I didn't really shop around too much, but it's basically a 62 slash 28 bearing. And if we take a look, Closely, we can see that made in Japan, Nashi, 6228. This one says C4, this one says N. Not sure what the big difference is there, but looks like the same bearing to me. So, same size, same everything. So cool, got our new bearing. Also got some grease to go along with it. And I will just, Pop a little grease down in here in the bottom here. I was kind of hoping for a sealed bearing, 
just because I think that would just, you know, be a little stronger against the elements, I suppose. But no big deal. Get the grease down the bottom there. Got to get grease all in this bearing. And I'm just sort of pushing it down through so it squeezes down and gets through to the other side. Just packing grease into the bearing itself. They make bearing packers. You can just kind of set it on top of this little plastic thing. You push the thing down on top and it squirts the, the grease up through the bottom and just squirts it up through the cavities. But I don't have one of those. They're kind of for older style bearings, the uh, tapered roller bearings. Before wheel bearings were pressed in, they were, you know, they were uh, separate, and you had the the you had tapered roller bearings, one on the inside, one on the outside, and you would set the preload on them and everything. That's a separate video. This this vehicle actually, the Kia Sportage, does have that type of wheel bearing on the front, and I thought that that's what was the problem originally, but. Of course, it turns out that wasn't the problem. But had it been the problem, I would have been able to do that video. So next time, let's go ahead and pack the front. Probably one of the messiest jobs in auto repair is packing bearings. Yeah. Okay. So the issue is, we need to smack the bearing down but we need to bang on the outside race, not the inside race. And this is the largest socket I have. This is a 36, and that fits, fits basically right in the middle of the bearing, which is bad. It needs to fit over the outside edges. So, um, what can you do about this? I could, if you have a punch, I suppose you can, you know, you can kind of bang around the outside edge and just bang it down evenly, and that's, you know, you can do that, maybe. I think that'll work if you're real careful with it, but I picked up one of these uh, bearing race driver kits, so I believe the 59 is going to be the size for us. I think this is actually 58, so I'm, this might get stuck in there. But I kind of tested it out before and the edges of this sort of taper in a little, so I think it'll be all right. So now we have our seal driver. And actually, I'd rather have this supported. I'm wondering if I can support that properly. You know what? Let's do this. Let's use the old bearing. Yeah, that'll work perfect. Doing good, a little high on the one side. Looking good. Let's just make extra sure that it's all the way down. All right. I think we're good. There's a little lip on the inside of this seal. So that's a little area that's going to contain some grease. So I will put some extra grease on the top here. So that'll just sort of contain it all down in there. All right, what I'm doing, I'm just gonna pack some grease along the edges. And when the seal drives down, it'll push the grease down. Anything extra will get squirted out the bottom. Yep, we're using the old seal. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm gonna try very carefully to just get it started. Okay, it's a little high on this side, so 
Okay, good. Seems a little better. Good, good. Looking pretty good to me. Let's drive it home. Okay, I don't want to hit it too hard. I'll just leave the extra grease in there, because why not? To be honest, I probably hit that down a little too much. It, I think it's caved in just a little bit. So um, I don't think it matters because there was that little, there was room there for it to do that. And I think it'll be fine. <laughs> I hope it'll be fine. So that's a, that's a good tip. Don't do that one too hard. Alrighty, let's go ahead and reinstall this. I really don't know what the torque is, obviously, um, so I'm just kind of doing it until it's really, really on there. Until it doesn't seem to be, seem to want to move anymore. At least not too much. So, I'm going to say that's good. You can see where they, they kind of staked it. They they punched it a little bit here and here. You probably should use a new nut. I probably should use a new nut. And you know what? I can see that it was here and here where they staked it as well. So maybe I'll just keep hitting it until this swings around. See if I can get it to swing around. This indent to swing around to right there. So I'll just kind of watch for that. I can't really get it to do that. I, I might have taken it a little farther past that than it should be. Oh well. But sounds great to me now. That's the way it should be. So let's get that on the car. Alright, go ahead and slip the drive shaft back up into place here. I remember correctly these went up from underneath see this one different than the other I think that one went there Not all the way yet. I get this other one started first, of course. So now we can get this back up into place. And you know what? Somebody, when I took these off of here, the lock washers were actually on the back instead of on the front underneath the nut, which is further evidence to lead me to believe this was done once in the past because I'm pretty sure that there, 
was supposed to be a grease seal on both sides of this bearing and I only found one on the outside here. I didn't find the one on the inside. There's just that, there was that gap in there where I think a smaller grease seal should have gone. So that just leads me to believe that this was done once in the past. Maybe this bearing that I put in is not the, you know, the exact OEM bearing. Maybe the OEM, the OEM bearing isn't an open bearing like that. Maybe it's sealed. I don't really know, but, uh, I'm going to put these bolts back in with the lock washers on the nut side, which is where they're supposed to go. Might have been easier to put these through the other way. Again, I'm not really sure. I mean, this is the way they were here when I got here, but I'm not sure if that's the way they came or not. It would seem to me to be probably a little easier to fasten these the other way, to put the nuts on this end. But, oh well. Yeah, they're pretty much not getting much tighter. I, I believe the torque is 36 foot-pounds. If I'm wrong about that, I'll put something up on the screen here. I will go back and check. But I'm going to do 36, see what happens. I got just a, a hair more on that one. This one too. Glad I did that. Let's give it a test. Purring like a kitten. Beautiful. All right, well, the proof is in the pudding, and that's the pudding. Thanks for watching.